All right, guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today we are talking about the Missionary Domain Cleric yes. from Crystal Punk. You guys wanted more? Bringing you more. Is, is this the most, um, what's the word I'm looking for here, like redundant class to subclass name? Um, I mean, it is pretty <laughs> interesting. <so> I'm like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's the cleric cleric. It's very much on the nose. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you're new to the channel or the series, what we're going to do is go through all the abilities gained in the subclass. We're going to rate the roleplay, combat, and synergy based on the abilities gained, how they improve on the base class abilities. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to be entered in our D&D Beyond bundle. All that out of the way, let's get right into it. Starting off, we are a cleric. I, I know this is painful to see free stuff for some things and not for others. I, I don't make the rules, at least not for this. So we do get some free spells. It's Bless, Charm, Person, Enthrall, Suggestion, Beacon of Hope, Tongues, Compulsion, Guardian, Faith, Dominate, Person. I pause hard for that. <laughs> and Modify Memory. So a couple of fun little big spells there for freebies uh, to pick from. And of course, again, with cleric, you get to prep spells You know, every day. You know all of your spells. But these are freely prepped, so you can focus on getting other why things. Not get more? <laughs> and there's a good, there's quite a bit of good RP value in here. That a couple yeah. of big spells like Dominate Person mm -hmm. being prepped for free is great. So you can then you know flex around whatever you need to get. But nice, nice variety either way. Uh, bonus proficiencies, also getting proficiency in your choice of Deception, Performance, or Persuasion. So three different RP skills to give you some options. Absolutely, and you're also a cleric, so also a level for, at level one. We have Blessing of the Believer. When an ally within 30 feet of you makes an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can use your reaction to give them advantage on the roll. When you do, the ally must proclaim the name of your deity or receive no benefit. Of course, that's kind of a flavor thing, but gives you some potential in there as well. Yep. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier, minimum of once. You gain all the uses on a long rest. Level 2. Channel Divinity Option. Sacred Words. As an action, you present your holy symbol, evoke the name of your deity, and say a few words about them, choosing from one of the options below. Choose a number of creatures within 30 feet of you that can hear you, up to a number equal to your wisdom modifier, to be affected by your chosen words for one minute. An unwilling creature must make a wisdom save to resist the effect. If such a creature fails, it can repeat it at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on success. The options are, they are mighty, affected creatures are pr frightened of you for the duration, they are merciful. Affected creatures are charmed by you for the duration. They are fearless. Affected creatures can't be frightened or charmed for the duration. So buff or debuff choice in there. Mm -hmm. Level 6, we get Divine Missionary. If you speak to a single humanoid or group of humanoids that are all within 60 feet of you for at least one minute and talk about your deity, you can attempt to magically infuse them with faith. At the end of the conversation, the targets must succeed on a wisdom saving throw against your cleric save DC or have the thought of your de deity linger in their mind for one hour. Until then, you and allies you choose have advantage on all charisma checks directed at those creatures. Once the effect ends, if a creature succeeds on a saving throw against the effect, target has no hint that you tried to magically influence it. That's important. Once you use the feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. And mm -hmm. Also, at 8, we get one of our coin flip cleric abilities. This one is potent spell casting, so anytime you add you add a wisdom modifier to any cantrip damage, you deal. Free damage, why not? Yes. Level 17, we have our capstone with Holy Emissary. You can use your Sacred Words feature as a bonus action rather than an action. Also, at the end of each of your turns while you are using the feature, you can cause all affected creatures that can see you to either take 10 psychic damage or gain 5 temporary hit points. Just a constant taking you know, pulse healing. of damage or heal. yeah. shield and such. All right. Well, those are all the abilities gained in the subclass. Mm -hmm. We'll just jump right on into the rating portion. First up is the role play. Asterisk, as always. Talking about role play, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside the initiative order. Not talking about your class. Fantasy, history, lore, background that's on you as a player. Can't rate you. Can't rate the abilities gained in the subclass, how they might improve your potential in those roles play scenarios yes. so all of that being said looking at the role play mechanic side of the subclass as alex mentioned right off the bat you do get some great spell options that are free yep. which you know can work in multiple different ways either you can double down on rp stuff if you need it because yep. you already have some prepared 
or it lets you just be more flexible on the combat side, having those things, some solid RP yes. options available. Yep. So great flexibility with that. The free bonus proficiency, you're never going to be upset about it. Is it crazy? No, but it's free, so that's nice. And you also get your advantage uh, with the ability check, but it is limited to your wisdom uses. Yep. So there is a little bit of limitation on there, which is all right for, for what it is. Um, and it can also be used for saving throws as well. It's just saving throws tend to fall more under combat. Yeah, with the exception like of a charm effect, you you're one of the few right. uh, saving throws you actually have for... Um... RP. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to the Channel Divinity as well, you have some solid options, you know, charming stuff. Frightening is a little bit more niche, but it can be used for, like, intimidation and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then just protecting your party from that as well can definitely come into play. The only issue with that is it's only for a minute. Yeah. So you'd have to be either really good with your timing <laughs> or yep. um, know exactly when something is going to be happening. So mm -hmm. there is some niche side on that. Uh, and then, of course, the capstone. The bonus temp HP is a little bit of, like, an indirect use because that lets you free up some potential spell slots. If you're giving everyone in your party, you know, 5 temp HP a turn, yep. you're talking 15, 20-ish health buffer yep. a turn, which is going to make up for spell slots that you would otherwise be using to heal. Yep. Even if it is just a little bit. It does add up over time. So if you're doing that consistently, it does it is going to help preserve I mean, spell slots. Think about it this way: if even if just one person gets that five temp HP, and you were to roll to cure wounds on that person, it's one d eight plus your mod. Right. So I mean, it's if you rolled average five plus a cap, you know, cap wisdom five is ten health. Mm -hmm. You're getting half of that what that spell heals every turn. Right. Passively, once it's active and rolling. Yeah. So it definitely has some good value there. Yeah. And for traps as well, you know, just to, if you see there could be something sketchy, you just kind of, all right, before we all jump in this, we're going to use this channel of Infinity and give us all some temp HP for a little bit while we're running over these spike traps or something. Yeah, it's like, ready and go. <laughs> just help prevent some of the damage. Yep. But yeah, all that being said, we gave it a four out of five in the role play. Yep. On the combat side of things, uh, things get, uh, they're interesting to say the least, but uh, they are kind of very specific to what yeah. it, it offers. Again, a lot of the spells either lean more toward RP based, or there are a couple that are CC spells that are very useful in combat, like Dominate Person, for example. Incredible spell. Any, any kind of Dominator holds are some mm -hmm. of the best, you know, crowd control spells because. The point Jameson always brings up is anything that messes with the action economy mm -hmm. of what's going on in combat is very, very potent. Because it's not just a hold where you're just kind of removing them from combat. You're literally flipping them to the other side of the table with Dominate. So it's a great spell just to have on hand and not one in this case that clerics normally have. Um, with the, the Blessing obviously getting a saving throws and attack rolls, you know, a, ch a chance to re-roll... Uh, to me, the the more I do this, the more I tend to prefer using rerolls for saving throws because yeah. making sure you options. yeah because yeah. making sure you hit an attack is good. Um, but if your party's dying, if everybody's dying, or like if you know like it's a big spell coming in, mm -hmm. like you know avoiding the enemy's hold person or you know dominate person is more important than you getting that one attack one, yeah, in. One attack. Where it's like, oh, yep, there's 15 damage. So you're a fighter. Ooh. You have four attacks. It's all right if you miss yeah, one. Yeah, calm down. Yeah, you'd be you'd be all right if you're a monk with you know punch punch kick kick. And he's like, you missed a d6. Do you think you're gonna be okay? <laughs> On the channel divinity options, I like the fact it's either a buff or a debuff option because you can either, you know, try to frighten something, try to charm something, or you can make your allies, you know, unaffected by those features. I, I like the choice there. Uh, again, I, I'm a huge op a huge fan of options and versatility what you get with your ability, so that's always wonderful. And of course, the the capstone ability with holy emissary letting you use your channel divinity as a bonus action is great. Not because of just it lets you use it that way. Is clerics don't have a ton of options for bonus actions from their base, and even a lot of their spells, you know, aside from like you know, sacred weapon kind of thing, um, a lot of it's all action based. A lot of your spells are that way. So the fact that you could use your channel of any as a bonus action and then cast spell, you know, a spell of any kind with your action is great by itself because you get to use your channel of any really a few number of times between short rest and like paladin. Yeah. It's like you know x number of uses per day. This is mm -hmm. you know uses per short rest. 
And then you get the choice of either doing psychic damage, which is one of the better damage types out there, or getting temp HP again. So it's help hurting enemies and helping allies at the same time. Uh, a lot of uh, good you know, versatility in there. However, you have a couple abilities that don't affect combat at all. Or with, you know, your channel of any is really focused on helping or creating frightened or charm conditions. So if you have stuff that's immune to being charmed or resistant yep. to charm, that's going to hurt that quite a bit. Uh, and, you know, the saving throw of doing the mm-hmm. doing the frightened stuff or doing the charmed stuff as you get later games is not going to be as potent later on. It's going to be, be a lot better early, you know, in, in my humble opinion. Um, so due to, you know, some of that, that kind of pigeonhole focus on what it's at and some of the limitations in terms of number of uses for a lot of the abilities, we got a three and a half out of a possible five for the combat side of things. Yeah, I think a couple things to kind of go along with that moving into the synergy side is there's some interesting internal synergy with the subclass, kind of working with like the channel divinity option with mm-hmm. the capstone and uh, that kind of stuff. But there are a lot of limitations. Like, for example, the channel divinity only lasts for a minute. And as Alex was saying, you only get a couple uses per short rest, which sometimes that's okay, you know, because sometimes, you know, it's basically two combats. But if you try to use one in an RP setting, though, exactly, that's That's where where you're running running time-based issues. That's one of the things with when you have limited use abilities, when they have an RP and combat option for both of them, but they use the same, like, cooldown mechanic, like they're off the same number of charges per day, it can be a little bit awkward because you're like, I want to charm this person and then it's like you fight a dragon or something and now you want the frightened or immune you, you, you want the front resistance because so, they're you know so yeah. and then you're like then another combat comes up or something or the dragon run, flies away or whatever yeah so and it was just like a fake out so you're like well i just wasted it and now we don't have time to take it for a rest we can't get it back so good luck everybody hope you make your saves good luck, <laughs> next else. time we see him That's so right. that can come into play for that kind of stuff and also the level six ability i don't think i really touched on this on the rp side but basically how often is it going to be that you're going to talk to someone for a minute to be able to get this buff for your party? And at that point, it's like, it, it just seems like it's really niche with how yeah. often you do that. Because to be able to, to talk you, for a minute. You're, you're going to have to, to somebody, be in like in urban settings, like talking to a merchant or trying to intentionally grab somebody's attention. And who, right. like what random person just wants to talk to some other random person for like about a specific topic. Right. You know, like, exactly. So it, it does last for an hour, which. Is, is solid and you get the bonus to the charisma checks for your group it's it's good but it's like you need to pair, pair this with a bar, be, a bard playing some music to kind of like draw a crowd in and then right. you talk and like there's incredibly limited yeah, it's with this um, I like what it's trying to do yeah. I get this but again the reliability to be effective and be able to use often is going to be I right. think a little bit more limited yeah. and the same thing with the capstone is great I mean just that free imagine you hit you know you can hit up to five if you have a wisdom of you know, 20, you could hit five creatures with 10 psychic damage a turn. Yep. At pretty good. I 50 seconds. And, and, and no save for it at that point as far as, like, the actual damage right. itself. Well, that's, that's what, if they fail the initial one. Right. You know? So, yeah, it's just free damage, which is fantastic. But you have to wait till level 17. You don't really get a ton early on, which is what it is. You do get to get some solid spells. Yes. So all of that being said, we gave it a 3 out of 5 yep. in the synergy. You get some decent options, yep. but a lot of it's niche, or it takes a while to get going. Yeah, like the the hitting 17 is what really helps out the internal synergy, because it lets that be, that channel any pop in the bonus action, and do the extra stuff, mm-hmm. so you can let you do your other baseline cleric things on the rest of your turn. Right. So yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when all of our new videos are coming out. Make sure you check out our sponsors in the link down below. And as always, thanks for watching.